Hello and welcome to Research Pod. Thank you for listening and joining us today. In this episode, we'll be looking at the research of Professor Guo Bing Chang Tian, Director of the Super Micro Mass Research and Technology Center at Chengshu University in Taiwan. His team studies different emission reduction approaches relating to toxic pollutants. Their work has massively improved air quality in Taiwan. According to the well-known quote, we are what we eat, one could also claim that we are what we breathe. Unfortunately, the air we breathe is not always clean, as it may contain viral loads and toxic pollutants, depending on where we are, who is around us and what is happening around us, especially in some sectors where various combustion processes are taking place. Workers and people in nearby areas might face problems due to the air quality. This effect can become even worse in industrial areas or densely populated urban areas with increased non-sustainable fuel-burning vehicle traffic. Presence of toxic pollutants in the air is not a brand new phenomenon. Much research has been devoted to air quality, gaseous effluence monitoring and prevention of release of harmful substances and materials in the air. But what exactly pollutes the air? Which are the toxic pollutants that can cause severe health issues when present in the air? Before diving into what pollutes the air, let's start with how the air gets polluted. Combustion, scientifically known as the rapid combination of substance with oxygen that results in production of heat, light and gaseous products, is basically the process of burning something. Combustion usually refers to burning fossil fuels like coal or petrol, or biomass like wood or dry woody plant parts. One way or another, we have all been exposed to an open fire outdoors or car fumes, and we probably tried to avoid the smoke associated with the process. Toxic pollutants present in smoke are derived from various combustion processes. These pollutants are not always the same. Their composition, concentration and combination highly depend on the substance that is being burnt, and the conditions of combustion. Toxic pollutants present in gas streams associated with combustion can, among others, include heavy metals, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon compounds, or PAH, polychlorinated compounds, polybrominated compounds, and particulate matter. Heavy metals are usually associated with industrial combustion, for example within the steel industry, and can comprise of lead, mercury, chromium, cadmium, and arsenic. Polychlorinated compounds can include polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs, polychlorinated p-dibenzodioxin, or PCDDs, polychlorinated diphenyl ethers, or PCDEs, and polychlorinated dibenzofurans, also known as PCDFs. All these are often associated with combustion. Similarly, for polybrominated compounds, the most important category is polybrominated diphenyl ethers, or PBDEs. Last, but definitely not least, another toxic pollutant often found in combustion gases is particulate matter, or PM. Particulate matter are tiny solid or liquid solid particles with a diameter measured in microns. An often used standard size for particulate matter is a diameter of 2.5 microns. This is generally referred to as PM 2.5. At that size or lower, particles can penetrate deep into lungs and cause severe health issues. Flue gas is the technical term used for the exhaust products during industrial combustion. It can contain a mixture of all toxic pollutants mentioned earlier, along with residual fuel and other substances that could not be burnt. Flue gas has been a major issue for chemical plants, as it is the equivalent of exhaust fumes for cars, but in a much larger and continuous format. Controlling the quality of flue gas and monitoring the concentration of toxic pollutants that are released in the environment is of imperative importance, especially in the last few years that environmental and health protection have received much attention. Professor Guo Ping Chang Tian director of the Super Micro Mass Research and Technology Center at Chengshu University, Taiwan, and his research team have been focusing their efforts in the area of monitoring and controlling toxic pollutants in flue gas and other combustion gases. 
For the past 20 years, the researchers have studied toxic pollutants in flue gas emissions, including dioxins, PCBs, PAHs, heavy metals and PM2.5. Because of the testing and investigation services offered, and the collaboration of local industries with the Super Micromass Research and Technology Centre, Taiwan has attained a 90% overall reduction of dioxin concentration in the past 20 years. A recent publication on the assessment of potentially toxic elements produced from coal-burning boilers and sintering furnaces in a steel production plant highlighted the reduction in toxic pollutants present in effluents. Pollutants reduction was attributed to the implementation of available air pollution control devices as a step before the release of flue gas into the atmosphere. This research focused on the examination of emission factors of toxic pollutants as they were calculated via field investigations and laboratory experiments rather than following the available guideline from the Taiwan Environmental Protection Agency as the standard values could be inadequate to represent the true picture. Emission factors, a common index for emission estimation, correspond to the weight of pollutant per unit of product or per duration of the activity that emits the pollutant and they are used to measure potentially toxic emissions. Focusing on a steel production plant, the researchers set up a sampling system for the collection of effluent samples from coal-fired boilers and sintering furnaces with the collection point being after the air pollution control device. They analysed those samples for heavy metal concentrations. It was shown that obtained results from field investigations were considerably lower than emission factors set by the Taiwan Environmental Protection Agency, a fact that could indicate overcharging of plants for this particular issue, even if plants are equipped with state-of-the-art control devices. In a different research project, Professor Chang Qian investigated the emission factors of polychlorinated and polybrominated compounds during rice straw biomass burning in fields. Air samples were collected from three different points during burning periods and non-burning periods and analysed for concentration of PCDDs and PBDEs. Results showed that during burning periods, the concentration of these toxic pollutants was much larger than during non-burning periods especially when samples were collected very close to the burning site. It was shown that the emission factor for PBDEs was almost 19 times higher than that for PCDDs. Interestingly, looking at the composition of rice straw, PBDEs were not originally present, meaning they must have been synthesised during combustion. The production of PBDEs during rice straw burning in open fields and the high emission factor of this toxic pollutant indicated that this phenomenon should not be neglected. Touching on the emission factors of particulate matter, PM2.5 specifically, researchers from the Super Micro Mass Research and Technology Centre also explored the difference that idle vehicles could make in air quality around a school site. They monitored the concentrations of toxic pollutants such as PM2.5 or PAHs and black carbon at normal conditions and when idling vehicles were restricted in the surrounding area. The sampling methodology included stationary and mobile sampling for spatial analysis of emission factors and analysis of results included chemical mass balance modelling to calculate the contribution of various emission sources towards the PM2.5 emission factor. Results showed that restriction of vehicle idling reduced emissions of PM2.5, PM0.1, PAHs and black carbon levels with PAHs showing the highest reduction by almost 50%. The highlighted research examples showcase that collaboration between industry and research institutions can lead to spectacular breakthrough in this case around air quality. Monitoring air quality is imperative as what we breathe affects our health and can contribute to environmental concerns. Through testing and investigation as well as adoption of air pollution control devices and implementation of emission control regulations the concentration of toxic pollutants can be monitored and reduced leading to overall improved air quality. That's all for this episode. Thanks for listening 
and stay subscribed to ResearchPod for more of the latest science. See you again soon.